Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome back to another UBL Week 8 versus the Toronto Tarantrums and Sin. Now, as you guys may or may not have noticed last week, we did not have our Week 7 game versus Fun Brother. It is because he has actually been forced to drop, and his replacement haven't been able to time as well as I was hoping for. Uh, since it's for Australia, we're 10 hours apart. Uh, we do struggle to time one another. Um, that said, as soon as that game is done, it's going to be uploaded and it's possibly going to be uploaded with a team builder. Um, basically, I do want to re-record a team builder because I went pretty much in depth versus fun and since they're playing differently, I'm going to use team in another way. So it may not actually be the very same team. Um, so, that said, fun brother is gone. The Jet is in, but we are facing Sin. We're going to focus on that. Now, this is a team that I've actually been looking forward to face because it's like you don't often face hyper offensive team in the league. I, I'm usually very alone in that. And this is actually quite on the upside of that. It's a hyper offensive team with defensive responses. Um, so it's kind of half half in synergies. And, and uh, that always is interesting because it means if it's played right, you can do multiple things. And I expect my opponent to do so. So. The team here is as follows, Mew, Gengar, Mamoswine, Rotom Wash, Stack Attacker, Incineroar, Shaman, Hitmontop, Crustle, Toe Cannon, and Mega Altaria. So overall, I would say the only merit I have over this team is that I am naturally faster. Gengar is his benchmark, which is nice, and his really, really key defense responses, Rotom, isn't a threat towards my team, mainly because of uh, Kroganol and Tangrowth, which checking that Pokemon quite right. Um, that said, Tokenning is tough actually for me to be dealing with. It's it's surprisingly effective versus me, which is kind of cool. Uh, since it does have speed, like my wall breakers, quite nicely and could be very, very threatening towards that. And of course, Stag Attack, I've done right, can be tough. Um, so, going over my team here, we have first and foremost Thunders, standard Thunders with Yasha Berry, able to deal with Mammoth Swine head on. Um, that's basically it. Stat wise, it's able to outspeed Gengar. I'm forced to go fully. Fully, 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 fully speedy and offensive, as it looks like. And that taxer is a combination of Thunderbolt, uh, Sludge Wave, Nasty Plot, and Grass Knot. Um, the thing is here, plus two um, Thunders do, as always, sweep a team besides Mew, and possibly Incineroar, depending on the set. If it is Assault as Incineroar, which I am expecting, uh, I won't be able to take it out, which means Stealth Rock is going to be necessary. Uh, but besides that, the Grass Knot is of course solely for actually knocking out Mammoth Swine. And uh, my initial strategy is somewhere down the line, forcing Hazard, uh, bringing Rotom Wash in to Defog, getting this Pokemon in, which, thinking about it, uh, I should be Defiant here. Um, I'm gonna change that since I have to have a Dream Ball for that, uh, because with Defogs I'm gonna capitalize on, of course, getting a Defiant boost. Which won't matter. Fuck that. Uh, it wasn't. I was kind of thinking of contrary. It won't matter. I'm not physical anyway. Uh, but yeah, pretty standard. Nothing to it. Um, set up Pokemon as always. Irish. I'm sorry. People have to prep for this. I don't. <laughs> Next Pokemon is Scissor. It's a standard Scissor, a bulkier variant. Uh, I always, in my previous videos, when I'm talking about the uh, league concept overall, I always talk about it's very important for teams to not have what I call a Mammoth Swine situation. That is being weak to the combination of Earthquake and Ice moves, like Ice to Crash. Mammoth Swine is probably the best wall breaker, if not at least top 5, uh, when it comes to wall breaking and offensively pressure teams. Uh, Scissor is a fair response to Mammoth Swine. It's like, I could use Kroganol, but it's going to be knocked out by Stone Edge if he carries it. Scissor do not care, and especially not the impish variant of Scissor. So the fat Scissor, fatish that is. Um, it's 1 in 12 in HP. Some attack investment basically to gauge some damage output on some certain Pokemon. We have a speed investment here to outspeed Bulky Rotom. Um, there is no reason for him of actually running speed on his Rotom, so I'm, I'm effectively going to try to outspeed it. And if I'm not doing that, then that's going to mean Rotom is easier to deal with anyway, so that's fine. Um, we do have speed at 12 EV uh, rotor, which means 2 plus speed or 2 plus points in the speed. And the rest is put on defenses to be able to not be 2 hit KO by Mammoth Swine, able to roost all its setup against it and whatnot. And attacks there, bullet punch, U-turn, sword snatch, roost. There is really nothing to it. Like, there are things here that it can be walled by, but I don't care. <laughs> um, the main thing here for Scissor is actually the pivot. Um, 
I was considering having Defog, but quite frankly, I mean, his setter is Crustle and uh, Stuck Attacker and Mammoth Swine, and I think it brings Crustle, that's going to be set up, uh, or I mean, uh, um, Hazards. But besides that, I don't think the others ever go to be running that because Stack Attack is better offensively, and so goes for Mammoth Swine. So if I don't see um, Crustle on a team as I start off the game, it's very possible that Mammoth Swine could be carry Stealth Rock, but that's really about it. Um, next Pokemon, standard freaking fat Bow Raichu, the Tangrove. Yeah, it's becoming fatter and fatter for every game, and I'm not going to stop that. I mean, we don't going to put this guy on a diet just yet. Stat distribution, very, very specially defensive, able to soak hits from Mew, Gengar. Of course, if Mew isn't physical, that's going to be quite spicy. Uh, able to switch in against Rotom, and uh, just overall, it's fat. It can be, depending on his set on Altaria, able to check that. Uh, I'm not going to aim towards that, but that's that's a thing. I think the physical variant of Altaria makes more sense, but since I have Sister, I'm expecting it to run fire coverage. That means it's going to have some special investment. Uh, attacks here, pretty standard here also. Giga Rain, Focus Blast, Slash Bomb, Knockoff. Uh, I was considering Earthquake, but Focus Blast is uh, better for Incineroar and Stack Attacker, and uh, I don't have to worry about potential burns, I just have to worry about getting you know Focus Missions and whatnot. But overall, Tangro's role here is to somewhere down the line, um, do damage, switch in and out, uh, soak as much as possible, and do fairly well. Um, Assault Vest here do ensure me to survive a Sludge Wave Life Orb variant off from Gengar. So that's basically what I'm aiming towards. Um, Gengar is a threat after all, and I'm gonna treat it as such. Um, then we have probably the best set for this game, um, which is a set I am I feel very comfortable with, and that is a Calm variant of Cryogonal. This set is, well, as you guys see, Calm. But it also has enough speed investment to outspeed um, a Timid or Jolly Altaria. Uh, because that's really all I need. Uh, no, Rotom. Bulk Rotom. No, Speed Altaria. Damn it. Um, but that's the only thing I really needed to watch out for. Uh, since Shaman do not fret this Pokemon with Hidden Fire Fire. Um, then the rest is actually a special attack to be able to ensure that if it is um, offensive Altaria, I guarantee to it KO it. So when we won, I should be able to win it, against it at least. And the rest of it is on defense, because Mammoth Swine, I really just want to be able to take uh, a potential knockoff, or um, um, I do not take Stone Edge, and that's going to be a risk. But overall, Krogonal should be doing well. The attacks here is Freeze Dry, because you don't have a natural switch in towards Freeze Dry. And if it has, we have Hidden Power Finding, I do believe. Uh, basically, that means that Incineroar, Stack Attacker, and Mammoth Spine aren't necessarily checking this Pokemon. It can do damage towards them. It is much better to go Toxic because that means Stack Attack sets up against me. I do not want that. And if Stack Attack go for a Crick Room, at least I get a huge ship on it. I I will not KO a Stack Attack. I should definitely enforce that. But I will definitely um, affect it so much that a uh, Mac Punch will guarantee KO it from uh, the Conk Elder. So with that said, Conk Elder. Um, this is a standard Assault Vest. Conkelder, nothing to it. We have Guts here to be able to soak a possible Will Wisp or fun away from Rotom Wash. Besides that, is Assault Vest to be able to deal with, well, basically anything. Uh, his biggest threat, as said before, a Mew, Gengar, Shaman on the special side, and potentially Altaria. Uh, this guarantee me that I can survive versus them. Uh, whether I'm gonna keep my Conkelder healthy or not depends on the matchup, but um, it should be able to do quite right. Now we have 72 in attack invested, basically to ensure to 2 it KO uh, Mew, if it is a Sea Crystal variant, because that's very likely to happen. And uh, besides that, I just want to get the damage done. Um, if I stay and take physical moves, it's going to be unfortunate with Conkeller, it's definitely not built for that. But that's really about it. Um, we have Drain Punch, Knock Off, Ice Punch and Mac Punch. Uh, Drain Punch to soak from whoever I can. Uh, knockoff is a core from you, Gengar, potentially Rotom. Um, Ice Punch is solely, I would say, for Alteria and Shaman. And Mock Punch is able to, of course, outspeed things that have priorities. Uh, they can outspeed me also, but um, basically, she went down on Crustle, she went down on Mammoth Swine. Um, yeah, that's about it. Stack Attack, I potentially in Trick Room. That's, that's my main thought. Uh, and now for what I would say the copy paste set, Aesilf. 
Now, for though you will have been following me on Twitter, I dropped Greninja and Gemesprit for Jellicent and Nasolf. And before you guys throw tantrum at me that Greninja is a lot better, what the hell are you doing? I agree. Uh, Greninja is absolutely, in many ways, superior to the change I made. The thing is here, I don't have a team that compensates for Greninja's flaws. So with that said, I decided to pick another Pokemon that do a similar role, uh, but basically have at least uh, a bulkier aspect. So Jellicent made more sense, as it does mean that I'm not as weak to Fire Attack, which is something I think I'm struggling with, forcing the energy to take that role that lacks recovery. And Aesol to be able to, if I'm switching to a passive mon, I need something that's more offensive. Aesol is, well, in lack of better words, phenomenal for hyper offensive teams because it does disrupt and set up hazards. It works really well with Focus Sash, which this set is. Uh, this set is. Um, stats here fully offensive and able to outspeed Gengar because that's the only benchmark I will have to go for anyway. Uh, attacks here, Stealth Rock, U-Turn, Knockoff, Explosion. Um, yeah, it's your standard Aesol. Um Whether or not I hive it or not, we'll, we'll see, but Stealth Rock is definitely gonna go up, because I think that's a very good lead way for my set of sweepers to clearly set up. Explosion, things aren't working out, U-Turn doesn't work out, Knockoff is a good for lead. Uh, depending on who he leads it with, I can potentially disrupt them, and, uh, well, that's something I want to do. Absolutely want to do that. <laughs> I think the only lead I'm fearing is potentially Crustle. If I'm facing a Crustle, I'm gonna U-turn. Um, I'm absolutely not staying in there and trying to knock knock with the Conkeller after, of course, as you guys know, a Mac Punch should be able to solve that. Uh, so yeah, with that said, that's the whole team. Um, things I expect. I should throw it out there. Um, absolutely think Mew is making it. Mammoth Swine, Rotten Wash, Incineroar, Altaria. Those five are definitely common. Those are the one, five I've been prepping the most for. And then is whether or not he wants to have Rotom Wash as a defogger, or if he wants Hitmontop to be a potential um, a spinner. Uh, I've been considering a Defiant variant of Thunderous to be able to capitalize on these uh, Intimidators, but I Hitmontop is kind of iffy. Um, if I have to guess, I would say either Shaman or Gengar makes the most sense here as his last Pokemon. But overall, whatever it brings is fine. I'm, I'm fearing if Tokenon comes, like that's a Pokemon that... I just I don't know how to deal with it. I never thought about it, and now that I have it in front of me, I'm still like, yeah, you know, hopefully uh, like a priority kills it. I, I have no idea. I'll I'll take it from there basically. So that said, transition. So all right, um, yeah, I think I related the team quite nicely here, and yeah, w he brought stack attacker, which I didn't necessarily see coming. Um, that said, that's gonna be very rough. As um, I don't bring Trick Room myself, and the main reason for that is because Stagataga is an active Pokemon that could do very well. Uh, I don't know if he brought it to um, counter a potential Trick Room team, or if he want to have a Trick Room on his own. I really, really don't know. The only thing I can say is that I'm very, very scared to see it, because, well, while I am a slow team, uh, there are Pokemon here that can outslow it. Um, Congeller, for example, I'm going to be reliant on Focus Punch, so... I need to somewhere down the line have that Pokemon somewhat healthy. Definitely not going to be knocked out. That's going to be crucial here. Uh, it should also be stated here that my opponent here actually, before going into this game, won his previous week's battle. So he is actually in the running for playoff right now, which makes this team tougher. Uh, it also means that effectively, depending on how this game go, I dictate whether or not he goes to playoff or gets knocked out. I basically, I own him. <laughs> I decided whether or not he's gonna die, but <laughs> no jokes aside, but I, I really really hate to be in that spot because I believe no matter how this game goes I'm either gonna face off a team that beats me um, Potentially in playoff or I'm going to effectively knocking somebody out, which is just as bad to be honest um, So um, yeah, that said um, there really aren't that many things I could predict here I believe stack attacker here is a potential lead to get with Mammoth Swine and Mew, so I decided to lead off with Aesol because I have a Focus Sash and I can disrupt anything and go for a knockoff, so yeah, that's it, that's that's all I planned. I'll, basically, I went into this game thinking, no matter what happens, as long as I can force Rocks and and force Rodan for a Defog, that's all I need. Like, if I'm doing that right, I should be able to win this game. So with that said, let's go into the match. So from the get-go here, my opponent leads off with Mammoth Swine. 
Um, I was thinking, okay, this could potentially be Scarf's or Rocks. I'm still going for Knockout. We do have Speed, which is great. Uh, we knock out Choice Band, which was, wow, really? Choice Banded <laughs> Mammoth Spine, holy shit. Uh, but yeah, of course I'm predicting the Ice Shot here. I'm gonna switch in my Scissor or the Fog War and soak that hit as well as I can, I should say. And uh, without the band, yeah, it's, it's not as threatening. Uh, my opponent is gonna switch out. I actually went for, you know, to, of course, the Mega Evolution to get it with a potential like, U turn here. Uh, basically, try to, um, well, try to get Piveting here. At this soon as in the game, it's very clear that Incineroar is a very safe switching tool to make a Scissor. So I have basically no reason to <laughs> to have a U or to do anything else besides that. As uh, so I'm gonna bring back Achilles, and I'm gonna get my rocks up. I was debating going for Explosion, but Stealth Rocks is so important to actually uh, nerf the um, the potential, of course, uh, of Mega Altaria at the same time that you know I'm I know I'm forced for a U-turn which means I'm bringing back the momentum. Now he brings in Mew, which was unfortunate. I realized that this, this could potentially be his defogger. So I go to Gohan, hopefully that I can force it out, but no, he go for a C, and he goes for a C fly something. I was feeling this, don't tell me that this is a fly combination of uh, Mew, but no, it's C Tailwind, and that made me happy. I was thinking C fly, that probably gonna knock me out. I did not predict for that. As knockoff do as I expected, around 50%, uh, he has a boosted crit ratio, uh, but due to him having Psychic and Psyshock, um, I was actually lucky here to hang on. Had he crit me, he would have knocked out my Gohan, no doubt. Luckily though, that was 12% chance of that happening, and you know, the odds were in my favor. Saying that like I had an honest chance, quite frankly, that scared me so much. As Altera comes in, I can't do anything with Altera without risking Conkeller and need it in case we have a stack attacker that can go for Trick Room. As my opponent gonna make a ball, his Altera of course, and it's going to have cotton guard and this surprised me so much at the same time i do realize that okay cool he couldn't be cotton guard and dragon dance at least so that means we're gonna go for freeze tries uh, but of course due to tailwind he does outspeed me here but as you guys can see the freeze try will do around 50 percent this is an offensive alterium as i was expecting and he's actually gonna switch out i went for hidden power fighting hoping to well claim something and Roman, the, um, of course, Incineroar comes in, and I do so little damage here that I am close to convinced that this is an Assault Vest Incineroar. If that's true, we are willing that Pokemon down already. So I'm going to switch in my Bow Raichu. Basically, I was hoping for Flare Blitz, trying to actually take him out by that, but that didn't happen. As he actually switches out himself, goes to Laundry, the Rotom, and this was not ideal. Like, I was um, thinking back and forth, how do I want to go about this? Thinking about it again, I should definitely go for Thunderous. As I said it before, that's the matchup I wanted. But I decided to stay in here because I thought it was so strange that he decided to stay in with his Rodan versus Tangrowth. This is not a matchup he'll win. Uh, I actually went for Sludge from here predicting the Altaria. But he keeps staying in, so eventually I just decided to go for Giga Drain. And what do you know? Um, that does as much damage as I was predicting it to do. That, like a lot of damage. And <laughs> I'm actually thinking he's gonna go for Pain Split again. I'm very safe here to, of course, bring the Gohan and basically ensure that Rotom do not get any recovery from me, or at least not enough. 6 to 9 or 5 to 4, however, is unfortunately not enough to kill it with a Mag Punch. I'm gonna switch out as he goes for a Volt Switch. That works quite right for me. Uh, I really, really am baiting the Incinerod comes in, but no, he brings in Mammoth Swine, and I can't do anything versus Mammoth Swine. However, I do have at least. And I say at least Scissor to bring that in again. Uh, while I feel that's very, very predictable, I also feel that he doesn't have a switch in anymore to Scissor because Incineroar is in such a low health. As he goes for Superpower, which I thought was cool. That's definitely a good filler move, if anything. Um, as uh, now I'm actually going to go for Roost, thinking that you know he's going to switch in Incineroar, I can knock it out with a Bullet Punch afterwards. But he has a Recovery Berry, so he's a fat Recovery Berry, and not only that. I don't know which spot I am in right now. As of this point, a Flareless will knock me out, absolutely, but we know already that this is a super fat very of Incineroar. It won't have any speed investment. I can easily go for a U-turn, uh, shipping it down as best as I can, as uh, Bull Raichu is still my switching, because Flare Blitz... I don't die to Flare Blitz, but I will knock him out. But he has Fire Blast, which doesn't do that much, actually, and I can still stay in, actually go in for an attack. And what do you know? 
Um, not only do we survive it, we connect the focus blast, and all of a sudden, yeah, that's a dead Incineroar. I never thought I'd see the day a Tangle of Wind versus a Incineroar. That's that's new to me. Uh, so it brings in Sonny, which of course is the Mega Altaria. Uh, not much switches where Altaria is actually not that good anymore. Uh, I'm actually gonna bring Gaithar, my Thunderous here, because I'm definitely predicting Roost, and um, I'm actually gonna go for a nasty plot here. The reason I decided to do that was because I thought it was going to sack play Rotom, and if that's the case, then I can wrap up with Thunders due to the Yasha Berry. But my opponent do stay in here and goes for Hyper Voice, and we can survive her, of course, even if it is offensive. But I was not expecting to do that much damage. I really, really want to see what type of Altera this was, uh, because that is a lot more than I thought it would. And not only that, uh, I can't stay in versus uh, Mamoswar right now, uh, so my best play is going to Scissor. Uh, Scissor could very well, of course, at this point wrap the game up. Uh, there's really nothing stopping it from winning. Uh, same goes for actually Conkeldur. And I had that in mind going into this game that I could potentially go for a Sword Stance here. Uh, just to kind of gauge if it goes straight to the Stack Attacker. Uh, because that's the case, and at least kind of ship Stack Attacker down in such a way that Conkeldur can wrap up. Uh, but it does decide to stay in, which is fine. Um, I can't efficiently switch into this Pokemon anyway, so I decided to go for Bullet Park just to kind of knock it out directly. And his two remaining Pokemon is of course the Laundry, the Rolldom, and uh, we don't want to get that Pokemon to get any Pain Split shenanigans. And of course, as I said in my Team Builder, we crept for bulky variant of um, Rotom, so we are able to outspeed and knock it out. And his last Pokemon is Stack Attacker, and of course it's not faster than Gelder, and... Uh, well, basically what that means is that, yeah, this is a GG, of course it is. Um, it really, I would say this, I think my opponent played this game a bit predictable, uh, not as, I would say, a criticism to him, but rather his his cool ideas, he played them too early, and I had a lot of stamina and health left in my team when he pulled that off, and I win because I know what everything is at that point. So, I think the team is right, I think the execution is just too fastly done for his own good here. So I want to leave this game with a few afterthoughts. Basically, uh, my opponent here, um, like I said, he played what I think his best plays too early. Uh, losing choice battle on Mavis 1 was tough, and of course, playing Tailwind too early with Mew was also tough. I definitely believe the combination of Altaria and Mavis 1 with Tailwind boost would have worked better late game than, than the early game because I could adapt to it quite nicely and it didn't affect my plays that much. And I don't mean that to be disrespectful, I mean that as the ideas were right, there were good things going on here. It just, like I said, it was too early, I had stamina in the team left, I could soak damage on that point and... Uh, yeah, I think it's tough. Because quite frankly, this was something I didn't predict and it could have very well backfired on me. And I think my opponent did close a very, very good game here. Um, well, this is a 5-0, as you guys saw in the video, it really isn't that one-sided. Um, I had Pokemon that clearly wasn't the brink of death, all of them, so I don't believe the 5-0 is a huge win versus him, but rather the execution of his defensive Pokemon, and of course a few offensive ones just didn't get the opening they needed. Um, that's really it. Um, so to Toronto Tantrums and Sin, I really just want to say GG, um, and of course, don't let this loss get you down, if anything. Like, while I do knock you out of playoff, which I feel awful for, uh, I really do. Uh, also seen games from you that have been deliciously well executed. So I know there are good things here. You just need to really focus on what you want to do with your team. If you want to play bulky or hyper offensive, just decide that I think the middle ground, while very, very tough to master. If you master that, yes, you're going to do well. But until then, focus, man. I think that's half the story. I really believe that you have something very, very good going on. You're just missing a few key things, and I'm pretty sure you'll figure them out soon enough. And when you do, I won't have a chance versus you. It just won't happen. So with that said, guys, thank you for the those watching. And uh, I'll upload, of course, the game versus Tom Brother as soon as I have that game. Uh, which is not used yet, of course. <laughs> so guys, thank you for watching. Take care.